Hey guys and welcome to another video. If you're new here, I'm April, I'm a skincare and cosmetic chemist. I talk about all things skincare, back end, front end of all things skincare. So if you're interested in that, definitely hit that like button for me down below. Subscribe to the channel because we're here every week, every single week, talking about skincare. All right guys, ah, something I feel like I should have freaking talked about a long time ago is kojic acid. Like, why am I just not talking about kojic acid? Literally, every time I see a video of kojic acid, I'm like, Ooh, I should make a video on that and I just never did. But today we're talking about kojic acid and we're gonna cover it really, really quickly because I feel like I just need to make a really quick point about it and talk about a few other things and that's really it. All right, so the first thing I want you guys to know is kojic acid is actually not classified as a skin brightener. According to the FDA, it's actually classified as an antioxidant. It's been described as an alternative for hydroquinone. It was actually discovered in 1907 through the isolation of Aspergillus oryzae, grown on steam dries in Japan. The koji in kojic acid literally means steam dries in Japanese. So like I said earlier, it's literally not approved by the FDA as a skin lightening ingredient. Just because of some of the tests that have been done on kojic acid, it didn't really show much of a skin brightening effect. So there was there was actually a study done on black guinea pigs with kojic acid. These pigs were administered kojic acid once a day, six times a week for five weeks straight. And at the end of the study, there was no change in the melanin on the skin of these pigs. So it was concluded that kojic acid showed little to no signs in reducing melanogenesis, which is basically the pathway for melanin to be formed in the skin, but it was shown to be non-sensitizing in the skin. Kojic acid actually is used in the food industry as a preservative and also as uh, to preserve the colors of like fruits like blueberries and like the red on like strawberries. So it has so many other uses outside of the skin. But when it came to like UV radiation and helping to fight free radicals that could be damaging to the skin, kojic acid was found to be very useful in that area. So I know you guys have seen all these pictures on Google, so many different pictures of before and after uses in kojic acid sure that can happen like i said it does have mild abilities to stop melanogenesis but it's not as strong as its counterparts like hydroquinone and retinoids it would not do half as what those products would do if you use kojic acid for as long as i don't know five months six months to a year consistently yeah you will see some change but also remember that it could be really sensitizing because kojic acid does have really sensitizing properties to it. So yeah, that's really it. Let me know if you've used kojic acid and how your skin reacted to it. I personally haven't used it long enough to see, but I remember I used it one time that I bought off of Amazon when I really wanted to get rid of darkness in parts of my body and I didn't really see anything. Granted, I didn't use it for a long time, but it just wasn't given for me. Like nothing changed in my skin and I just stopped using it. And I think I also got irritated if I remember correctly. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on kojic acid. Acid. Um, again, you know, my final thoughts on it, not the best treatment for hyperpigmentation. You're better off getting a hydroquinone or a retinoid, as I always say. But yeah, let me know your thoughts below. I will be more than happy to hear them. And yeah, let's chat about kojic acid. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and join the family. I'll see you guys soon. Bye!